Hello, I'm Michael Glass from MichaelGlass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. This is our Forex Technical Analysis Trading Plan for the pound dollar, the euro dollar, and the dollar franc. Before we pull up our video, we always want to start off our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be inferred as a trading recommendation. No matter what for investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. You can't lose all of your money. Any strategy we show today are for informational purposes only. Future results are not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is solely your own responsibility. Trade at your own risk. As we said, this is our forest technical analysis trading plan for the pound dollar, the euro dollar, and the dollar franc. In each video, we look at the prior session's price action to come up with key support and resistance price levels. We'll review the gold chart to come up with leading sentiment. We'll try to create a low volatility and sidebar watch list, and we have an education spotlight at the end. Please send your feedback and comments to contact at dmbfx.com, and let's head to the charts. As usual, we're going to start off with the gold chart, and we can see this lovely uptrend for gold on the daily chart here, pushing higher. Uh, we did have an increase in volume here as we moved higher, but we can see that the the volume, our long-term, short-term moving average, our buy and sell moving average is at parity. So that's going to be interesting to see um, as we try to continue this move. Again, long-term, we can see we are well off the moving average, just a great uptrend. Um, if we ignore the moving average and just, you know, uh, Take a look at it. Let's try it one more time. There you go. Something like this in here. So you can see, even our pullback never really came back, even all the way to uh, the uptrend line. Uh, certainly, though, came back to some key support price levels. So what we move on from here is two things. We transition over to the hourly chart, our one hour chart of gold, and we can see prices accumulating. Today, if, if you look at it, when we think about this move on the daily chart, this was, a, today's a breather day. You see another one in here with our inside bar. And so today, as we consolidate, the market is breathing and it's taking in all of this move. And it, it has to make a decision about whether or not it's going to continue or not. Now, indications about whether it's going to continue or not. Uh, one way to see that is the U.S. dollar. And we can see if uh, in a couple of weeks we have the debt set ceiling uh, debate going on in the states. And if they choose to uh, raise the debt ceiling, if they choose to... Uh, as indicated earlier this week and week in the dollar, then there's going to be a flight to gold and gold will go higher. Um, if something else happens, gold may go let, lower. But for right now, we're going to go ahead and let our indicator come in, but at least get down here to uh, um, get out of the overbought zone and get more into oversold before we start looking for uh, a move higher. Uh, let's go ahead and do one more thing. I showed you the monthly. Let's go ahead and take a look at this parabolic move here, and we'll go like this. So clearly, um, just a, a straight up move, anybody that caught it, congratulations. So with gold continuing to be move higher, how does that affect the dollar? We'll start off by looking at the pound dollar. Here we are looking at the daily chart for the pound dollar, and we'll talk about a couple things. I've been talking about the light volume in this move. Um, even our big push up here did not exactly blow us away on volume. But what is important is that, uh, remember, this was on yesterday, Bernanke in the States, talked about possibly weakening the dollar by doing more easing. Uh, today, he actually said the policy is not imminent, and so you're seeing uh, uh, the dollar strengthening a little bit today. And that's also why you see gold pausing, because 
that imminent move that was kind of hinted yesterday is not so imminent. Obviously, you can see as we were pausing at the 50 moving average, we've got a little pullback now. So, what we have to see is this channel that we're in on the daily chart, this channel, we have uh, what was resistance now becomes support at about 1.607. Will this hold as we move towards the top of our down chin channel? To confirm that, we'll move over to the one hour chart and we'll go through our steps. First, where are we? We're well off our long term moving average. Here's our long term moving average. We're well off of that. Where are we also? Well, this is parity, this is neutral. And so we're located in what we would call selling area, selling zones. So we're off the moving average, we're off in a sell zone, we're a little bit below our short-term moving average, which should bring us possibly back down to parity. What else do we see? Well, we come down and we see, although both the dollar and the pound showing a little strength, we see that the dollar ever so fractionally has taken control. So when a dollar takes control, we come back over to our daily and we can see that the uh, we're pulling back in the market. We also see that the selling volume is still moving higher. So we're well off our long-term moving average. We are in a selling area. We see the dollar taking control and above zero. That gives us some inclination that there could be a possible move towards parity. But we got a quick spike up in our probability indicator. What's the probabilities of a reversal? So I would like this to confirm once again and move back up into our a higher probability of a reversal before truly entering that trade. Moving on to the euro dollar. Again, over on the daily. We had our move up off of Bernanke's comment in the weakening of the dollar. Now we're seeing a pullback. So what we should do is we'll look at a couple things. I had this on here, but it's not there now. We'll come back over and see. Uh, we have two areas. We have uh, this wick here area is a place of interest. And also this area right here is a place of interest. And so what we'll do is let's go ahead and start off with the wick and let's take a look. If we go with the wick, where are we at? Mm, is it being honored? We went through it here, we went through it here, honored here. Just trying to see if there's any buying support. Will, do buyers find value at this 1.415 price level? Right now, not really sure. I don't really see it. And the main reason is because there's wicks all over the place in this this price level. So what I'm looking for or what I'm trying to identify is after we hit the moving averages here, are we coming back down to 200 moving average? Are we coming back? Uh, we have seller volume in control and volume's okay. It's not great, but it's okay. So we'll come over to our hourly chart and take a look. Well, first off, we are underneath, underneath our uh, long-term moving average. However, even though we're underneath it, we're in the neutral area. We're not in a buy area. We're not in a sell area. And that might be the case because, again, coming back to the daily, and you see all these wicks in this price level, that's indecision. You know, so we're in a neutral area, but we're well off, not well off, but we are off from our long-term moving average. Coming down, who's in control? Well, just like the pound dollar, we're seeing the, uh, on a euro dollar, the dollar taking control again, thus we have our push lower. Um, we also can see uh, in our probability indicator that it's getting closer and closer to our uh, probabilities of a reversal to the upside. So another reason to not uh, uh, try to play a, a short is that um, we're in the neutral zone. We're off of the long-term moving average. Our probability indicator is heading towards a move back up towards that long-term moving average. But the reason to possibly sit on hands is that we're in a neutral zone. We're in an area where clearly 
it's not clearly defined if buyers are finding value here on a daily chart. Um, so for me, I would sit on hands initially and let's see what happens as our probability indicator gets gets closer towards the reversal uh, area. Finally, we're going to go to the dollar franc. And here, you, again, the theme of the day, yesterday was a bad day for the dollar. And now we're coming back a little bit. Uh, what's interesting on this one is that uh, you can see when we come over to the hourly that the franc... Uh, has taken control, met parity, took control again, and now the dollar is trying its best. You see it's really moving up, trying to take control again. However, you know, as we look at the average, it's there, and the question is, can it make its way through, and thus can we get the franc to move back down towards its long-term moving average? When we look at our probability indicator, we can see it's basically in a neutral zone, and uh, what we what we really want to see is that we are well off from our long-term moving average. We are in an area that would be identified as a buying zone. So what we want to see is the dollar clearly take control, which would allow this pair to move, continue to move higher. As we begin to look at our low volatility watches, we're going to watch the Euro Yen again. We're going to watch the dollar franc and the dollar Canadian. There's uh, some of them are just a little ahead of time, but they're starting to form again. Use a one hour time frame, put your standard Bollinger Bands on with standard two deviation, and watch as those bands begin to pinch and start marking those price levels. Keep in mind you want to look to the left, make sure that there's no wicks above or below those, uh, those Bollinger Bands so that you don't get into a breakout that just gets hit by those uh, wicks. Uh, we do not have an inside bar uh, candidate at this current time. So we've been talking about what separates winning traders and losing traders. And today we want to talk about the playing field and that winning traders understand the playing field. Now, what does that mean? Trading is not just about uh, taking every trading setup. There are <coughs> excuse me, uh, uh, plenty of opportunities in the market every day. Yet, um, winning traders know when to stay out and when to get in, when to say, yes, this is my trading setup, but there's something else going on, the playing field, and losing traders take every trading setup. For example, understanding the playing field, are you aware of news of the day? Are you going to take a trade setup right before news is going to be released? Understanding the playing field is understanding long-term support and resistance. Are you going to take a setup that's going to run you right into that? Understanding the playing field is understanding how the professionals play the game. I was talking with David yesterday about stops, and he was, you know, educating me and sharing with me again about the, you know, we uh, 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 true professionals understand hiding stop, and and I I I understand that, but even better professionals hide them better, <laughs> and so. You understand the playing field and understand that there are market makers coming to look for your stops. There are market makers trying to get uh, newbie, uh, new traders to buy, and you have to understand that. So understanding the playing field is understanding how professionals play. It's understanding the context of the day. It's understanding the, um, the environment of trading and not just the trade setup. Which, again, is our focus at DMBFX.com, focus, discipline, and professional trading. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.